every single week we do the great search brought to you by digikey thank you digikey and lady use her powers of engineering and smarts and more to search the digikey site to find the parts that you need lady Ada, what is this week's great search okay this week's great search um is uh you know it's funny is 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 half of the time the great searches are things that i personally am searching for during the week that um you know i, I can't get or um got discontinued or whatnot and um, so this week is um, a part that we use in a lot of our boards for polarity uh, checking uh, we, instead of a diode, like it's polarity verification, um, or sometimes for you know turning on and off voltages and stuff um, and loads. So let's go to the computer and I'll show I'll show you the part. So this is a board that uses an AON seven four zero one. It's a P channel FET. And in this case, what it's doing is it's verifying that the power that comes in from this DC plug, this power pin, is uh, positive polarity. You know, how does it do that? Um, well, this is, you know, it's kind of twisted, but uh, this is the gate, this is the source. So as long, so this, compared to this, has to be negative. So if this voltage is negative, this transistor doesn't turn on. And so um, there's no uh, uh, voltage here. Um, if this is a positive voltage. First off, this does turn on, and also there is a, a body diode that turns on. So the body diode doesn't matter as much because the transistor gets turned on. Um, but what's nice is that, uh, you know, why use a PFET instead of just a normal diode? Um, much lower uh, voltage drop and um, uh, much higher current throughput, much lower, um, uh, much less heating because there's a lower uh, voltage drop and current. So. And also, they can be a little bit smaller. Um, you know, diodes are great. Use diodes. These are a little bit more expensive. There's also, you know, these don't have as, as high a voltage um, capability. Um, but they're, you know, pretty much good enough for um, most polarity tests that we have to do. So this is um, AON7401. And uh, love that AON7401, except for... It's uh, no longer available. It is obsolete, it's not manufactured. And this actually happens a lot with transistors. Um, transistors, PFETs, NFETs, you know, FETs in general, uh, power FETs, I've, I've kind of had to do a couple revisions with them. They, they seem to kind of cycle in and out. I think that um, they're based a lot about what manufacturing capability is available, what you know, pricing, you know, people are willing to pay, et cetera, and then they kind of get cycled out. The, the, the good news is that there's always other transistors. The bad news is it's a little annoying to find the drop-in replacement. So, um, you know, we've been doing a couple tough ones lately. I thought I'd show this because, you know, transistors, it's not like some parts we've shown where it's like, well, I want the exact same specifications. You just want something as good or maybe as good as your, you know, your requirement is. Just because this transistor has a VGS max of 20 volts doesn't mean you need your replacement to have it. So you do have to check your design uh, to make sure like what you're using it. And, and, and ideally when you tr design transistors, I, ironically you think it's like, what's the big deal? It's a transistor, you know, PN2222s are available forever. Specify what is important. Is it the VGS? Is it the RDS on? Is it the capacitance? What is important about the transistor? What specifications do you have to hit? Um, because when you have to get a new transistor because it went obsolete like this one, you'll have a much, much easier time. So do future you a favor, specify your transistors. That said, let's see um, what we can do to find a replacement. Now, the first thing, first off, I'll, I'll open up another page so that we don't, uh, so we can always refer to this. So it does have some specifications that are important. It's a uh, 12 amp ambient, 3.1 watt, uh, you know, ambient, 8 DFN 3x3x3 by by, um, package. It's a PFET, it's a MOSFET. So let's let's go down and we'll find um, what do we want to have similar when we're looking for, you know, we want to, want to match up. Well, first off, we need it to be a P-channel MOSFET, okay? No question. But a lot of these other specs, again, you don't necessarily need it to have 14 milliohm RDS on. You just have to have something that has good rds on maybe it has to be 14 but you could maybe it could be less nine is also good you're not going to be you're not going to match specifications exactly that each one has very weird mini specs that you're not going to match so um we're not going to be able to match those here i wouldn't recommend that because you're going to cut down the number way too much um 
What is important is that you want to have the package match because I want I really don't want to redesign my PCBs. Chances are you don't either. And I like this 8DFN package. Now the thing about this 8DFN package is it's like it's a kind of a weird package and it's called different things. Like different companies have packages that are named something similar and you might be able to use it in the same package but they're not named the same because like once you get into like the DFN land and some QFNs and like the, na the names get like really weird, especially with MOSFETs, you get like weird cursed packages with like little, you know, gates and then the drain's massive and the source is like five places. So in this case, um, there's only six items that are eight DFN three by three, but that's because like there might be other names for them. But if we call it an eight power VDFN, suddenly like there's 140 options. And so I'm gonna go with this because I can then, um, I can drill down by the package size. Again, knowing that like each company might have a slightly different name. They're called like Hyper Power Fet Package. Like who knows the name of the package? It's not, it's not standardized like SOIC or TSOP or DIP. A little annoying, but again, this is why we're, we're, we're doing a tough one. Um, I do want something that is active because uh, I'm not going to go through this again in a week. I want to I want to get this done, get this done fast. Uh, and I'm going to say normal stocking. I don't want to because I, I need to buy a bunch of these. I don't want something that's it, it's okay if it's not in stock today because I actually have about a quarter's worth of these uh, transistors. It's just that I'm going to need more real soon. So I'd like to order ahead of time. And as you can see, there's all sorts of like ridiculous names. Um, there's 8DFN 3.3 by 3.3. There's 8DFN 3 by 3. There's the 5 by 6, and I'm not going to be able to use that. But I might be able to use the 3.3 by 3.3. So I'm going to have that, and then EP is an you know, extended package. Maybe HSMT I can use. I don't know what these TSONs, VSONs, but anything that's about 3 by 3, toss it in. Let, we'll sort them out later. Right. Well, just let's get let's get the options, and we can always look at the data sheets and sort out what we want. Um, okay, so we got fifty six options, and yeah, you can see like they all they're even if they're called something different, they all kind of have the same game going on here. You can see that there's like these little legs, and then there's this one big package, the heat sink package, and then you know they look a little bit different maybe, but they're probably all going to work fine as long as the outer shape and the pin pitch is the same. And again. We'll sort those out later. Um, okay, so what's important here? So what's important to me for this is um, the RDSON is kind of is kind of important, right? Because I'm passing a lot of current, and honestly, that's going to dictate a lot of what currents be able, you know being able to pass. And you know, current is, depends on the heat sinking, blah blah. But the RDSON is the RDSON. I want that to be nice and low. Um, now, thankfully, this one has an RDS on of 14 milliohms, which is quite nice. And if you look down here, let's see what's available. Um, you know, a lot of them are, are 14, you know, there's not, there's some that are really high. But, you know, I can, uh, I can pick, you know, let's say 18 and below all of these. So let's filter those out. Another thing is, uh, you know, the VGS, right? What is what is the max voltage that I want to protect against? And um, this one is, I think, 25, plus or minus 25 volts. I don't need to be plus or minus 25, but I do want to be over 12. So I'm going to pick out the 12, 20, and 25 VGS maxes. So that, give me, that gives me 34 options. Um, capacitance, I don't care about, uh, power dissipation, I don't think that's going to be an issue really, um, VGS, threshold, you know, all these are, um, three volts or less, and, and honestly, because they're used for, this is used for five volt power, all of them are used for five volt power, so all these are going to be okay, they'll, they'll turn on nice and hard, um, so let's see what is available, okay, we have a couple options, um, all of them look pretty good. A lot of like low, you know, milliamp, uh, high, uh, low milliohm, high ampere ratings. Um, I do want to try to get one that's a reasonable price. Oh, one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exclude uh, marketplace items, 
And then I think I'm also going to, since a lot of these are out of stock, I think I'm going to do in stock. Yeah, it's like nine. Um, so it looks like we have a couple options here. There's the PXP 018, uh, RQ3 from Rome. All these look pretty good. If I want to be more picky and I want to say only give me, you know, the, the, uh, whoops, not this one, the 20 to 25 volts, this gives me six options or so. Um, this one is, you know, of course, always sounds great whenever you have something with the same part number, like 7401, AO7401, DMG8401. So this one, this one's a good, wait, not in stock. Uh -oh. That's weird. It says it's, you know, I noticed this. Uh -oh. Sometimes uh -oh. <laughs> people buy them right when you think. But, uh -oh. um, you know, for the pricing, and if I want to, I need about a 1000 I think this, this is probably going to be my option. Of course, I'm going to verify that this package works. I'm actually going to buy five of these and then solder them on and make sure that uh, they work in the use case I've got. Um, but it looks fine, and there's a couple thousand in stock, and the price is about the same. Um, you know, I can compare the specifications, but they're almost identical, and this has a better RDS on. So mm -hmm. this is going to definitely, um, you know, this says continuous drain 12 amps, and this one is also continuous drain 12 amps. So this is a very nice alternative. It's pretty much a drop-in, as long as the, the pinout is the same, which it, it probably will be. Okay, let me do a question. Yeah. Let's assume you don't find a drop-in replacement. Is it worth maintaining two variants of the same breakout? Um, well, if it's discontinued, then no. You know, if it's discontinued, you just cut your losses and you move on. Okay. And we'll do one question after the yeah. uh, segment's over. Okay. That was a great search. Thanks, everybody. Where in